Hey there, welcome to this video series on songwriting. And in this video series, we're looking at how you can songwrite and record it at the same time. And part of the recording process is the production process. So if we're to put our production hat on, it means we start thinking about how we can take all of these instruments and all of these sounds that we're layering together and produce them in a manner which is going to sound really interesting, but also complement the lead vocals. Now, a key way to make your instrumentation sound interesting is to figure out how you can use it to make the most impact in your track. So when we're recording, it's very unusual to take an instrument and play it from start to finish, unless maybe it's the drums. But even then, we would be looking at varying it up and adding contrast so it makes different sections of our song really pop and stand out. So. To simplify it, what we're going to talk about in this video is how to start editing all of these instruments so that they fit together, so that they sound like they're in time, but so that they're really supporting the vocal production and of course our song structure to make sure that all of the sections of our song in terms of the verse, chorus, bridge, intro, outro, to make sure that they've all got their own identity and they're all going to fit together really nicely. And we're going to have continuity from start to finish. But we're also going to make our track sound interesting. So even if it's subconsciously introducing something like, you know, the whirly or the roads or introducing a feel just at the right moment to make the listener feel like there's something a little bit different about that section, but at the same time, not surprising them and not making them feel uncomfortable or edgy when they listen to our song. Let's go take a look inside the door and look at some techniques that we can use to make our sections pop and to also try to get this song stuck in people's heads because that's what we want. We want them coming back to this song and to our music. The first thing I'm going to do is use my marker tabs to go through and preview the very first few seconds of each major section in my song. There's a couple of things I'm looking for. Firstly, I'm looking to see if each major section has its own identity. Does the verse stand out as a verse? Does the chorus distinctly stand out as a chorus? And is my intro impacting? And there's a few things that can really shape how these different sections have their own identity. One of the most important factors with a track like this is, does it have swagger? Does it have groove? Do the drums and the bass production give off the right vibe for each individual section? My drum production in this track is quite unique because I've got an acoustic kit with three mics and then I've got an electric kit and they're both doing their own thing. So I haven't used any sound replacement. So right now I'm soloing each individual kit and the individual instruments in the kit to make sure that they all gel together. And then I'm going through and I'm soloing the bass to see how the bass sits over the top. So it's basically soloing each independent part to make sure that they all fit together. And they should all fit together because that's the beauty of writing like this. We're writing and producing. So once I'm happy with my bass and drums, I'll continue to solo the other instruments and just do a quick check over everything to make sure it's all nice and in sync. Hooks are a massive part of music production and I've introduced this hook in the second half of the intro and it's got three synth lines and an electric guitar. It sounds pretty cheesy on its own, but I really like the vibe with the whole track going. The next challenge was how do I get from my intro to my verse? Well, I'm a big believer in space. Step away. Space 
brings one of the most impacting dynamic changes in a track. Now I've introduced the electric Rhodes piano and I've also dropped the drums and bass out. That space really allowed the vocals and of course the story to be introduced to the listener. I didn't let the track drop for too long and I've subtly reintroduced the acoustic kit and the bass in the second verse. I'm also throwing in a new hook. Let's have a listen to it in context at the start of the second verse. I'm so tired, I wanna get to sleep tonight And it's all a lie, I just wanna make it out alive Rather than going for a really involved guitar rhythm part or, you know, keyboards playing the chords, I've basically got a guitar and a synth just playing some sparse hook notes and the Rhodes has gone back to just simply playing chordal shapes over each of the chord changes. So there's lots of room in there for the vocals to come through. I wanna get to sleep tonight I'm not alive. I, just I needed a really simple and effective way of getting into the chorus, so I came up with this. It started with this drum fill. Then I put this cheeky little hook in. And the bass is almost taking it over. Then I added those cheesy synths as an end to their verse hook. You're always a There's two distinct new colours added in the chorus. We've got short plucks and a sustained mellotron. I've changed up the drum production ever so slightly in the chorus. Just to help the chorus push along a little bit more, I've actually started with the hats and the shaker playing eighth notes, so double what they were playing before. And the tambourine was also introduced in the second verse. There's something really doing my head in here. It sounds like a mosquito. And it's this guy right here. So that's the electric piano with the distortion over the top. And part of the production process is using a mute tool. So trying something and then admitting failure when it doesn't work. What I've done is split the electric piano part up onto two tracks. Now one track has a tremolo on it and a compressor to control the sound. And the other track has a mono to stereo enhancer. So it's giving that part or that track more width. So sometimes it's also about breaking up a part which you've recorded on one track and just doing something different from section to section of your song. Now moving further along here, I've got electric guitar parts which have been introduced in the chorus. I've also got this piano octave part which is, you know, kind of similar to the plucks. It's just adding a very monotonous rhythmical thing up high, just basically a piano octave. And then I've kind of gone Elton John with these piano chord parts. I've actually removed a couple of chords which I felt just impeded the lead vocal a little bit. In verse 3, once again I've gone for space and this time I've involved the Mellotron. So I've gone a little bit Beatles and just check out what I do right at the end of the verse. Rather than using a fill or anything too overstated, I just felt like a pitch drop was a really subtle way of introducing the next major section. I don't say a thing about me. Yes, your life. I've also brought in another pad here just for the second verse to add some atmosphere and I thought it might be time to revisit my verse hook, which is basically the plucks and the cheesy guitar line. There's a cheeky vocal pickup there in the lead up to the chorus, and this is a line that occurs nowhere else in the song. So I've got a strong feeling that in the mix down phase, I'll probably cut the last half of that synth and electric guitar hook just to make room for it because it's it's only there once and I want people to notice it. 
Music production is all about repetition. And in the third and fourth verse, I've repeated that awesome little bass hook or motif from the intro. So here it is in the intro. And now here it is in the verse. Life, I wish you all the love you can buy. I hope you find good reason to laugh and smile. So you don't have to talk about I'm not that exciting, there are better There's that perfect little drum fill again. It's really understated, but it works great. So this is what my shakers are doing in the verse. And then when it moves to the chorus, I double that timing and I've lowered the shakers in tuning a little bit. I mentioned this before. My hats are doing exactly the same thing. The acoustic hi-hats are also doing the same thing and introducing them both together gives this really high, nice metallic sound which really drives the chorus on. I absolutely love what that overhead mic has brought to this track because it gives a sense of room and ambience over the top of what's essentially hi-hats, kick and snare. And of course the kick and the snare have their own direct mics. So combining that overhead with the direct kick and snare from the acoustic kit and the electric kit really brings a unique element to the track. I said earlier that I was going to do this in the next phase, but I'm doing it now. I'm getting my scissors and I'm basically cutting out the last section of that verse hook with the plucks and with the electric guitar. It doesn't need to be there and it's just going to add space for that vocal line to come through. Now this video is all about music production, but I feel like that vocal line could just be sweetened up a little bit with some more high end. Talk about I'm not that exciting. There are better things to talk about. Euro is a victim. And that seems to have just really helped them, I guess, poke through a little bit more. You telling everybody. Now there's some more of my dodgy electric guitar, which is just basically adding atmosphere over the top of the chorus. You're always a victim. I'm always a sucker. Finally, we've got this breakdown section, which at the moment is just simply that high octave piano, the bass, and the roads, which is once again a lot of space. Now I've got my mute tool, and I love this tool. It's one of my favorite tools because I try cutting everything. I'm ruthless. Doesn't need to be there. Just cut the guts out of something and then one by one introduce part after part after part and see if it works. A bad romance. Circumstance. We're fucking up a bad romance. Now, I don't think I'm really going to do much to this last bar before the final two choruses because I've used that other drum fill enough. So basically now my last chorus is a repeat of everything that was in the choruses before and I'm letting the extra vocal production take over and do the work. Of course, I've still got the decision to make on the mosquito part and the jury is still out in that, but I've got some time to think about it and make a decision. I am going to try copying this piano part across into the breakdown. You're always a victim, I'm always a circumstance. It's too much the first time. Let's ditch that one and go again. You're always a victim. I'm always a circumstance. We're fucking up our bad romance. That works great. And I guess there's a lesson to be learned here. Do we need to start recording new parts or can we actually borrow them and reuse them from somewhere else? So the question is, do we create again or do we curate from parts which we've already got down? And we keep going back to this concept of repetition being important when it comes to songwriting and of course music production and recording because it offers the listener a sense of security and familiarity. I feel like it's important now to go back and revisit where we were in the first video. How did this whole concept start out? 
let's go back and take a quick look. So there you have it. We've taken a look at how we can produce an entire track to, I guess, help our vocals stand out, but also to help different sections of our song have maximum impact. In the next video, we're going to take a look at one of the most important processes in the whole entire production chain, and that is the dark art of mixing. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and check out this video. Make sure you give us the thumbs up if you've learned something, and of course, Subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.